Hello viewers, this is the third and final part of my video presentation on J.M. Kutsi's novel Disgrace. In case you haven't watched the earlier videos, you can find the link in the description below. J.M. Kutsi's novel Disgrace was published in 1999. It is an important and deeply disturbing novel. Kutsi's portrayal of post-apartheid South Africa is unflinching and brutally realistic. David Lurie, the protagonist of this novel, is a twice-divorced, 52-year-old English professor. He teaches communication and romantic literature at a technical university in Cape Town in post-apartheid South Africa. Generally unhappy with his job, Vain about his fading good looks, he is trying to write an opera on Lord Byron's last days in Italy with his mistress, a married woman. Lury is a sexual predator and he satisfies his sexual needs by spending Thursday afternoons with a prostitute called Suraya. It is a discreet affair carried out in a luxurious apartment belonging to an agency that provides call girls to moneyed clients. David Lurey tries to develop a romantic relationship with Suraya who rejects him and ignores him. Then he has sex with a secretary at his university. He considers her to be unattractive and so he proceeds to ignore her completely in future. David Lurie's predatory gaze then fixes on Melanie Isaacs, an attractive colored student in his romantic literature class. He makes her consume alcohol and proceeds to sexually exploit her. He stalks her, even when her boyfriend threatens him. When she stops attending his classes, he gets her address and number from the college office. He visits her at her hostel and continues to follow her and persuade her to get into a sexual relationship with him. David is threatened by Melanie's boyfriend and Melanie's father confronts him, but he persists with his sexual exploitation of his vulnerable student. The affair between the teacher and the student becomes public and a committee is constituted to inquire into the issue. Lurie's response is disinterested and indifferent. He also grants grades to Melanie for a test that she hasn't written. He refuses to explain, justify or apologize for his predatory behavior and he ends up losing his job in a disgraceful manner. He then decides to go to his daughter Lucy's farm in the Eastern Cape. She runs a dog shelter and is a lesbian. She leaves by selling produce and boarding dogs. For some time, Lurie is settled and relieved. He adapts to the life on this remote and isolated part of South Africa. Lucy is helped in the management of the farm by the much-married black African Petrus whose farm borders her own. But soon, all hell breaks loose on the farm. In post-apartheid South Africa, the blacks have become more powerful, resurgent and they wait for opportunities to unleash their anger and resentment against their former white oppressors three black men arrive at Lucy's farm, claiming that they need to make a phone call for a sick relative. They force their way into the farmhouse and all three of them proceed to rape Lucy. Lucy recalls that the three men had looked at her with rage and anger while raping her. For them, raping her, a white woman was a way to get back at centuries of colonial oppression that had dehumanized them and made them bitter and angry. They locked up Lurie in the bathroom and set him on fire. He manages to escape, but he is unable to protect his daughter from the vicious gang rape. 
all the dogs in the cages on the farm were shot dead dogs in south africa are a symbol of fear white power and colonial oppression and blacks were repeatedly warned to fear dogs this is an act of repressal on the part of the blacks against the white colonial oppressors of erstwhile apartheid south africa the men take lurie's car and despite complaining to the police he doesn't get back his car a different car in a different color with a different registration number and a music system is handed over to david lurie the newspapers spell his name as lurie and david lurie is relieved that his disgraceful act at cape town university will not be connected to the news of the gang rape of his daughter lucy at her farm in the eastern cape lucy an independent spirited and resolute woman becomes indifferent and prone to anxiety attacks after the violent attack lurie persuades her to report the brutal attack to the police but she refuses to do so she is shaken and vulnerable but she does not seek comfort by talking about the terrible experience to her father she prefers to confide in bev shaw her friend who runs a shelter for animals and euthanizes strays david begins working with bev shaw and they have an affair bev shaw is an unattractive woman and not someone whom david lurie would usually notice or have an affair with but he builds a relationship with her and refuses to let her euthanize one of the dogs david's task is to load the dead dogs into his truck and take them to the incinerator kutsi's description of david lurie taking the dogs in his truck to the incinerator is almost dystopian David suspects that Lucy's black neighbor Petrus is responsible for the attack on her. Both Lucy and David are invited to one of Petrus's parties. Kutsi's description of the get together creates an atmosphere of palpable tension and a feeling of violence waiting to be unleashed. Lucy and David are the only whites among the blacks gathered for the get together. Lucy sees one of her attackers, Pollux, at the party. David talks to Petrus about Pollux and he is informed that Petrus, sorry, that Pollux is his relative. There is an air of fear, hostility, and we can sense the vulnerability of the white father and daughter duo among the blacks. They soon leave the party and Lucy refuses to register a complaint against Petrus or Pollux. The relationship between David Lurie and his daughter deteriorates and David moves out. He returns to Cape Town to find that his house has been burgled. David tries to meet Melanie Isaacs but he is again threatened by the boyfriend. He goes to Melanie's home and plans to seek forgiveness from the family. But there his sexual desire is rekindled when he sees Melanie's younger sister. David meets Melanie's father who insists that he must stay for dinner. Melanie's father says that David must find solace for his disgraceful act on his own and that he cannot forget forgive David. The novel concludes with David returning to Lucy's farm. Lucy is pregnant but refuses to go in for an abortion. Pollux starts living with Petrus and David catches him spying on Lucy while she is bathing. Lucy refuses to take any action against Pollux. It is as if she has resigned herself to fate and she believes that she as a representative of the erstwhile white colonial oppressors of south africa must atone for the sins committed by her compatriots 
David concludes that eventually Lucy will have to marry Petrus and he will take over both Lucy and the land belonging to her. Lucy seems resigned to this eventuality and Lucy returns to work in the animal shelter. The novel concludes with David handing over the animal that he had so long protected from being euthanized. He agrees to the animal being subjected to mercy killing. James Coetzee portrays the grey shades in both black men and white men. David Lurie, the protagonist, is not the typical righteous, sensitive, chivalrous hero. He is a sexual predator who does not desist from exploiting the vulnerability of his student. His disgraceful act returns to haunt him with full force when he finds himself unable to protect his own daughter Lucy. When she is raped by three black men and he is locked up in the bathroom and set on fire, Kutsi portrays a bleak scenario of a country where the old order is giving way to a new order. David Lurie is a vain intellectual who blunders through life and he justifies his lust for younger women by saying that he has a right of desire this is a, i'm quoting it from the novel luri undergoes a change in his attitude towards women by the time the novel concludes he eliminates i quote his sexual vanity and his sense of superiority South Africa a nation going through a difficult violent and troubled transition is portrayed by Coetzee through his spare and matter of fact prose the fall of apartheid led to the crumbling of the powerful white regime and its replacement by the hitherto oppressed black majority the once powerful assertive and aggressive white male who strode the apartheid era south africa with supreme arrogance had to adapt and adjust with the post apartheid world of white powerlessness and vulnerability the novel depicts violence against women the subjugation of women a changing political scenario and personal disgrace Kutsi explores human beings placed in extreme situations and conditions. The human soul is examined with depth and intensity by Kutsi in his novels. When we read Disgrace, we are forced to confront the grey areas in our soul. Kutsi reminds us that it is not possible for us to escape from history. History will always extract its dues from us. as evident in kutsi's disgrace lucy's refusal to register a complaint or leave her lonely farm in the eastern cape is because she believes that she must pay the price for centuries of oppression by the whites she says why should i be allowed to live here without paying subjection subjugation she calls it and she is prepared to adapt to the changed circumstances and continue living on the farm alone or after getting married to petrus she seems resigned to her fate because she believes that she must pay the price for the damage that has been done by white oppressors Kutsi himself has said that if you are white no positive active role is left to you either you accommodate yourself to the unreasonable or you play out your life in some futile back alley you are doomed to this by the disgraceful history of your kind maybe it's fair maybe it's not but it is the way things are Kutsi's disgrace concludes with the message that you can never run away from history and history always exacts its price from the oppressors. Music